Hey folks, Ron here on another adventure. Today I'm, I'm filming something that was kind of a last minute thing. I was off filming uh, Matt Damon's house and then I thought, you know, I know something that's sort of close by, sort of not, but I've been by it before and I thought maybe you might want to see it. But again, I don't know. So you'll have to maybe in the comments you can let me know if it's interesting. But it's the house that Nicole Brown Simpson lived in right after, immediately after she separated with O.J. Simpson. And she lived here for about a year prior to moving in to uh, the Bundy condo where unfortunately she and Ron Goldman were murdered. Um, this is also, I'm also going to be showing, this is also the home, the famous Gretna Green house, which we heard about a lot in the trial. This is also the home where Nicole, uh, well, there's a couple interesting things. Number one, in October of 1993, this is where Nicole called the police saying that O.J. was going crazy and knocking in there, trying to break down the door because he had caught, or O.J. was sort of spying out in the bushes and he saw Nicole, um, how should we say, having sexual relations with Keith. There's no way I can pronounce Keith's last name. starts with a Z. But he was apparently the manager of Mezzaluna. Again, the connection with Mezzaluna restaurant where Ron Goldman worked uh, the night of the so-called O.J. Simpson murders. Anyway, but O.J. was looking through the window, saw Nicole and Keith getting it on on the couch, and O.J. went crazy and stormed in. And you could hear him on the 911 call and saying that, you know, that... Um, that uh, the kids were there. I'm sorry, some of the neighbors are checking me out, so you gotta be careful. That, you know, the kids were there and it was a terrible example to set for the kids, so on and so forth. Um, if this is also the residence where, I think it was prior to moving in, or maybe just after moving in, through Faye Resnick, she met, Nicole met, uh, Brian Kalen, otherwise known as Cato Kalen. And they kind of hit it off as friends and, Cato asked to move into the guest house and rent the guest house from her. He did stay there. He also took care of the kids, uh, Justin and Sydney, and I'm sure he did dog walking and stuff like that. She expected him, Nicole expected um, Cato to move to Bundy with her, the Bundy condo where she did, where she moved and unfortunately was murdered, but he declined and he moved in with OJ actually, and uh, as we know, rented, um, rented sorry dog is pulling me here as usual and i'm also seeing people here's the house by the way across the way I'm seeing people out in front and in the garage and loading up so i'll have to be a little careful how i film but um he went to oj or kate cato went to live with oj instead and lived in one of his guest houses out by the pool uh, and she never forgave him. Um, she never, I don't believe, uh, Nicole ever spoke to Cato again. She felt like he was a traitor. Let's see if we can see the house here. Like I said, there's someone out front. And interestingly enough, there was also, that's the house there. Interestingly enough, there was also uh, a couple of people sitting in a car across the street checking out the house just before I got here. It's the house with the, right here, with the BMW with all the doors open. It wasn't like that a minute ago, so I just happened to catch it at the right time, huh? <laughs> Maybe I'll come back to it. But um, OJ, but Nicole viewed Cato moving in with OJ as the ultimate betrayal, and I don't believe, like I said, I don't believe they ever spoke again. I'm gonna see if this lady moves. How dare she be in the way of my filming her house? And I'll try to film the house again. But there it is. She's just going from the garage to the car, from the garage to the car. See what I can do in a minute, folks. All right, I may not get a better shot than this, but this is it. And then uh, she moved to Bundy, the Bundy address. I found it very interesting that just as I pulled up, there were two women sitting in a car checking out this house. <laughs> You know, this is the first time that's ever happened that I actually had to wait or compete with someone else. They weren't filming, just looking at it. You know, I, ironically, it looks like the security is a little better in the visibility here than the Bundy condo. So I wonder if Nicole had still been living here in 
June of 1994 if the murders would have been able to have been committed. It's more open here and there isn't a patio. If we would have had him meet him on the front lawn and then maybe the neighbors would have heard something. The dog is leading me that, this way. Now I want to respect the people's privacy and not go right up to it. The train is here. He's leading me right in front of the house. Interestingly enough, now I've done a vlog on the Bundy condo as well, the murder scene, and so lots of people, and they've changed the address since uh, the OJ murders to confuse people, but they can't confuse me because it's still the same unit. All right, folks, we'll be back with you in a second. So as I film here and as I speak to you, there's one, two, three other people walking dogs on both sides of the street, as am I. I guess it's the witching hour at the dog walking hour so I'm gonna to try to go back again but I'm walking my little guy as well it's also my cover you know who suspects the guy with the dog right okay so we're gonna to try to turn and it's a beautiful neighborhood oh also what I want to say was that ironically come on this is only about and I think this is a bone of contention all along too this is only about this is less than a mile from, come on, this is less than a mile from um, the Rockingham address, you know, 360 North Rockingham, or the former 360 North Rockingham, where OJ and Nicole lived together, and then where OJ stayed after the divorce. It's only about a mile away. Now, I think the reasoning was, supposedly, you know, they wanted to be close for the kids' sake, but I don't know. Some people say that... OJ and Nicole, they just couldn't get enough of each other, even though they were separated and then divorced. Some say that they just couldn't get enough of each other and wanted to stay close. I mean, less than a mile. So she could check out, although, you know, OJ's place was gated, but OJ could come here anytime. As you can see, there's no gates out in front. See who was parked out in front. That must have tortured him, just tortured him. And obviously it did, his blood boiled over on that day in October of 93, and he did try to break the hat door down and get into the house, and she did end up, um, Nicole did end up calling the cops. All right, let's try to get another view of the home. This woman is still loading stuff into the garage, and there's a lot of people out, so I think I'll call it there, folks. My name is Ron. I really do appreciate you watching, and if you like the content, please uh, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. And if you do subscribe, please hit the little bell icon. Let's try to get the house behind me. There's the house behind me. The one with the red tile there. If you do subscribe, please hit the little bell icon, as I said, so you'll be indicated as to when I post. And please uh, comment in the comment section if you see fit. I would appreciate it. And also give the channel likes because that's really what moves it along. Gives me traction. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching and listening. We'll see you at the next location. Bye-bye.